Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is October 3rd, 2020. This is going to be the continuation of the Tabernacle series, Seeing Christ in the Tabernacle, the Tabernacle Furniture was indeed in the shape of a cross. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a few things. I hate doing a series and then, you know, spending a week before I do part one to a part two to part three, because then you forget a lot of the things leading up to this. But the uh, first part of the series, we kind of covered the, uh, the tabernacle itself was surrounded by a linen type fence. It was more like curtains, I guess you could say, a wall. And the, the white linen would uh, represent the covering of the righteousness of the Lord. So if you were inside the tabernacle where the Lord dwelt, uh, you were covered by his righteousness. But if you were outside, well, then you had a problem. And after all, in Isaiah 59 and verse 2, we read, but your iniquities, now what's iniquity? Sin, sin and unrighteousness. You know, things, evil things that displease the Lord. That's what iniquity is. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Now that's what I love about the King James Bible. Let's say you didn't know what the word iniquity meant. Okay? But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. See, that's called parallelism. You may not know what iniquities meant, but it tells you your sins have hid his face from you. So if you were outside the tabernacle, your sins had separated you from the Lord. All right, so you walk around to the entrance of the tabernacle, and you would hand the priest your sacrifice, your offering. Because only the priest, the Levitical priesthood, could go inside the tabernacle. Only they were allowed. So then they would take the lamb or whatever and put it upon the brazen altar, sacrifice it, and then burn it. Now I don't know if you're very familiar with uh, you know burning stuff but it's a very dirty, messy affair. I mean, you get smoke all over you and uh, charcoal and what have you, you know. But uh, the thing is, you'd be smelling, there'd be smoke, there'd be burnt flesh from these animals. It would be a very dirty, messy affair, I'm sure. My opinion. And when you went through the door, Christ was the only door. There's only one door to the tabernacle, and that was Christ. And when you got to the brazen altar, you're at the foot of what appears to be a cross. You're at the foot of the cross. Well, when you're at the foot of the cross, there is the sacrifice. Okay? And if you... Don't catch my drift. Go back and re-listen to the um, first part of this series. 
All right, what's the next piece of furniture after the brazen altar? Uh, the laver. It is a basically a wash basin. So let's take a look at the wash basin. Now, lavatory is where um, is comes from the root word um, where it's talking about the wash, a place of washing. Lavatory, L-A-V-A-T-O-R-Y. Uh, it's a place for washing. Have you ever called? Uh, uh, it's you know not a common English word, but you know lavatory. Uh, I guess today modern day usage would be you know the bathroom, but uh, so so the laver is basically a large basin to wash in. Uh, the Bible doesn't give much of information concerning the uh, dimensions of it, but it doesn't matter. It was a place where the priests that were doing the sacrifices would wash their hands and their feet. So let's take a look at that. Exodus chapter 30, uh, verse 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. Hmm. When they shall go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. See, you had to be clean when you went before the Lord. Now, obviously, we're talking about physical cleanliness, but is there a, is it a shadow of a spiritual application being clean? Oh, yeah, I think so. They shall wash with water that they die not, or when they come near to the altar to minister to burnt offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not, and it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Now remember, Aaron and was of the tribe of Levi, as was Moses. So, so washing the hands and feet, right? Well, Washing your hands is what the things that you do, right? And washing your feet was where you were going, right? What path? And what did Jesus do at the Last Supper? Uh, he washed what? The disciples what? He washed their feet. Remember? All right, let's go to John chapter 13. Verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin. That's probably, I, I don't know if it's the Greek word for labor. I don't know. But uh, the idea is the same, right? I probably should have taken more Hebrew and Greek when I was in Bible college, but I didn't. Besides all that, all the old uh, believers that did Greek and Hebrew dictionaries and lexicons, um, they're all gone. Now you got all these modern people 
Um, for example, Henry Thayer. Thayer has a lexicon of uh, Bible languages. And the guy was what you call a Unitarian. He doesn't believe that Jesus, well, he believes that Jesus as a man became God. That's what Unitarians believe. I mean, they believe that everybody's going to be saved eventually. They don't believe in hell. Uh, they don't believe in the flame of fire. Um, I mean, some of them actually believe that Satan's going to get saved in the end. Uh, they ought to read the book of Revelation, but they really, you know, they don't believe that stuff. You know, uh, they're sort of kind of like the Jehovah's Witnesses that... Uh, well, you know, God loves everybody, and he, he doesn't want, he would never, never want people to suffer in hell. You know, he's not that kind of a God. No, he's just the kind of God that rained fire and brimstone down on Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, but uh, they have a different God, you know. To them, Jesus was a man that became a God. We're all gods to them. Unitarians. And his Bible words, dictionary, lexicon, reflects his beliefs. Now, really, do you want to learn Greek and Hebrew from an unbeliever? No, thank you. I don't. But uh, all the publishing houses that are putting out these Bible study stuff now are owned by the devil's kids. And I'm speaking literally. Okay? So, what I wouldn't do to have a 150-year-old lexicon of Bible languages, I might actually be willing to study, but I don't know. All right, uh, he riseth, verse 4, John chapter 13, verse 4. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Wow. The creator of heaven and earth was washing the feet of the disciples. Wow. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. You know, I, I get Peter. I really do. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. Lord, yeah, wash my hands and my head too. Where I walk, what I do, and what I think. Verse 10, Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is, that is, uh, neither, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So, um, you know, that's the thing. If Christ came to earth and suffered and died, the master, well, what about his servants? You know, uh, pre-trib rapture people, they just can't get this stuff, you know. 
Millions of Christians in Russia died in the last hundred years for their faith in Christ. Where was their pre-trib rapture? Huh? I mean, Christ died for us. I know, I've beat that horse a billion times. Now, how about uh, Titus 3 and verse 5? Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. All right, uh, how about Ephesians 5, 26? That he, Christ, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Well, who's called the word of God? Christ is called, Christ is the Word of God, period. Now, the water in the New Testament speaks of, think about it, what does water represent in the New Testament? Baptism. But before we go there, let's take a look at some uh, usage of water in the Old Testament. Now, where's the first place in the Old Testament where water was used for washing? Uh, let's see. Hmm. How about the flood of Noah? Hey, yeah, the flood of Noah. How about Genesis 6 and verse 5? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6. Genesis 6, 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now please don't fall for uh, these false teachers that tell you that when God repents, that means the same thing as we repent. It doesn't. God doesn't have sin that he needs to repent of. I mean, God was sorry that the earth had become such a mess. But that was not his original creation or intent. Um, and if you don't know what happened in Genesis 6 and why the flood of Noah, I've got an entire playlist. But I warn you, it's only for mature believers. I mean, the churches teach nonsense and turn the Bible into a fairy tale and an Easter egg hunt, and a Christmas tree. I'm sorry, I don't do that. That's why I don't have a mega church, and a Learjet, and a mansion on the beach. My mansion comes later, probably after I have to give up my life for the Lord. But the thing is, the uh, I honestly believe that the fallen angels were doing genetic modification even back in these days. I mean, that's my opinion. You know, uh, some of these, but, but there were weird things going on after the flood also. Okay? There were giants before the flood, and there were giants after the flood. Just think, just think about Goliath and David and Goliath. Okay, they have found giant skeletons in excess of 12 feet tall or long. They have found some, according to what I've heard in Greece, that were 20 and 30 foot in length. But, uh, you know, take a look at the, uh, the elongated skulls. Uh, 
Have you ever heard of Cyclops? It had a single eye in the middle of its forehead. Uh, have you ever heard of the Minotaur? The uh, it had a a um, from the waist down it was a, or the chest down it was a man, but the head was a, of a bull. Or uh, the centaur, which was a horse's body with the uh, from the waist up was a man's head and chest. Um, you know, there's uh, what about uh, gargoyles? Are they just, you know, they found gargoyles all over the world, uh, statues, statues of them. I mean, what, what, did this come into the people's imagination or did they model it on something? Look at the gods of Egypt. Seriously, pause this right now. Go and type in gods of Egypt and take a look. You had one where it was a man's body, but the head of a bird. I think it was set. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, where did these come from? You know, did people make these things up out of their, you know, thin air? No, I think the fallen angels were uh, doing genetic experiments even back then. I, that's just my opinion. I can't prove that with the Bible, you know. So, you know, don't hold me to it. But there's a reason why the Lord wiped the you know use the the water to cleanse the earth he washed the earth think about it yeah and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast why the beast too and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that i have made them i wonder if the dinosaurs were uh, some kind of a genetic experiment i don't know verse 8 but noah found grace grace in the eyes of the lord and you know those of you who've listened to me for a while you've heard me say this before i've heard so many people say oh well the old testament that's just a book of law and and wrath and judgment no not entirely Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Here it is, we're in the book of Genesis, and there's grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, his bloodline. Generations, G-E-N-E, -E, his genes. And Noah walked with God. And guess what? The ark was probably in some ways similar to the tabernacle. You were either inside or you were outside. Another thing, too, to think about. All right, let's take a look at uh, Matthew chapter 24, the most famous uh, end times verse, probably the most end, famous end time verse. Uh, Jesus telling you what's up, Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah, Noe, which is Noah, the Greek rendering of Noah, uh, but as the days of Noe were, so, sh uh, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Who got taken away? Good question. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Okay. Who was taken and who was left? Well, if you listen to the pre-tribbers, Wow, that's the pre-trib rapture. We're, they were taken and everybody else was left. Uh, really? 
Um, you know what? At you know who was taken? Yeah, the wicked, the wicked gargled water. They were the ones that were taken. Who was left? Noah and his family were left behind. At the end of the flood, they were the ones that were left behind. The wicked were taken. They drowned. Luke 17, 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Oh, yeah. 1 Peter 3.20, which sometime were disobedient, which once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a-preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. That's right. The earth got baptized. The wicked were taken first, and Noah was left behind. Luke 17, 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they building, they builded. So... Lot was left behind, and the wicked were taken, right? Verse 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. 2 Peter 2.12. But these is natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed. Ah, you want to be taken or do you want to be left behind? I don't know about you, but I want to be left behind. Made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That was 2 Peter 2.12, by the way. All right, let's go. I hope I made my point. Let's go to the Moses and the crossing of the Red Sea. Guess what? Some people got baptized there, huh? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Exodus chapter 14. Oh, let me see where to start. How about... Yeah, let's go to the beginning. Exodus 14, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pahath-Haroth between Migdal and the sea, over against baal Zephon, uh, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. The Red Sea, right? For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Sometimes Pharaoh hardened his own heart, and sometimes the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. You know what, people? When the Lord calls his children, and you think, well, you know, yeah, I, I can feel the Lord calling me, but I don't want to do it right now. I'll do it later. Maybe the Lord will harden your heart and slam that door. You know, that's a thing. You know, God built had Noah, Noah build the ark. And you know who closed the door of the ark? The Lord did. Noah didn't close the door of the ark. The Lord closed the door. You were either in the ark or you were outside. And hopefully you could swim for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon, upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, 
that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them, encamping by the sea beside Pihahiroth before baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that, uh, than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, I love this, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, don't, don't fear. Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. And let me tell you something, people. Revelation 12, where the, uh, the woman, the church, one day God's remnant, the church, is going to go into the wilderness to flee from the, the serpent, the dragon. Yeah, one day it's going to happen. Just like, you know, the, the New Testament is the fulfillment of the shadows of the Old Testament. You know, read Revelation chapter 12 after you get through reading Exodus. You know, God took his people out of Egypt because he wanted to take Egypt out of the people. He wanted to get rid of all that satanic garbage. And just like in Revelation, he wants to get Babylon out of the people. The Christmas tree, the Easter bunny, the Playboy bunny, or the Easter eggs. Same thing, right? Uh, you know, I don't know. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Guess what? This is, the Bible records, Paul records, that Moses and Israel, the church, were baptized by the Red Sea. Oh yeah. Think about that. I'm gonna re I'll read that after we get done. Yeah, maybe I'll read it now. Oh, I was wrong. Acts chapter seven. I think this is Peter. I'm not sure. 
Uh, verse 35, 7, Acts 7, 35. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had showed signs, uh, showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Listen carefully. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers whom received the lively oracles to give unto us. See, the church was in the wilderness with Moses crossing the Red Sea. Somebody send a memo to the Baptist churches. You know, the church, the church, the church was with Moses in the wilderness, crossed the Red Sea. Ugh. No, they want to believe the Antichrist over in the Middle East. They, they want to think that that's Israel. Well, they can think that's Israel all they want. Verse 39. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. See, the Lord wanted to bring them out of Egypt, but he wanted to get Egypt out of them. Getting them out of Egypt was the easy part. Getting Egypt out of their hearts, that was the hard part. That's why they wandered 40 years. So the old generation died out. And the Lord could start off new. Oh, I was right. It was Paul. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Moses. There was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, remember? And they were baptized in the sea. What sea? The Red Sea. They passed through the sea. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat, the manna, right? And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. There you go. Let's go back to Exodus 14. Uh, verse 15. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So Moses had a rod. Uh, you know, if you ever, uh, this is kind of off topic, but I'll just give you a quick glimpse. Now, think about this. Moses had a rod. He struck the rock. It gave him water. He struck the Red Sea or whatever, lifted up the rod, and the waters parted, and they went through on dry ground. Have you ever wondered why um, Harry Potter and the magicians and the sor sorcerers and the Satanists, what do they have? A magic wand. Sort of a counterfeit rod, if you will. Yeah, everything that the Lord does, they try to... Um, counterfeit 
But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud, remember, we just read that in the Corinthians. Now remember, Corinthians was a church in Corinth, a city in Greece. Now there were probably some true Jews there, but Mo, you know, probably the great majority of the church there were Greeks. Boy, tell that to the Hebrew roots people. Greeks! That's why they don't like Paul. They don't believe Paul. Paul's a false apostle, they say. Well, I believe them. I believe them that Paul is not their apostle. Because Christ picked Paul. Paul, and they don't believe Paul, and they don't believe the one that sent Paul. No, nope, they got another Christ. Oh, I'm sorry, they don't have a Christ. They got the, a Moshia, a Hamashia. That's what they've got. Their Messiah, who's going to come probably really soon. Verse 19, and the angel of the God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their faiths and stood behind them, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by not night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. It was darkness to the Egyptians. But it was light to Israel. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen, and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked upon uh, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, and they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, and the waters may come upon, may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. And when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. And there remain not so much as one of them. Let me tell you something, people. Well, back in them days, people, uh, soldiers wore armor. Armor was heavy. I sure wouldn't want to be on the bottom of the Red Sea, have the waters come flying on top of me, wearing heavy suit of armor. It wouldn't be very easy to swim with armor. So guess what? They're going to drown. Boom. Flood of Noah. The flood of the Red Sea. Baptism. Yeah, the baptism of the earth. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. And there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry ground in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. 
And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Boom. Well, guess what? Um, Elijah, uh, not Elijah, but his servant, uh, Elias. I got to look it up. That's right, Elisha or Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A. Um, what's interesting is he was the um, helper of Elijah. And he actually parted, I think it was the, the Jordan. Believe it or not, he, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he parted... He parted the waters just like they did back in the uh, days of Moses and the Red Sea. Oh, I was partly right. I was half right. Turn to Second Kings, Kings chapter uh, Second Kings, chapter two. Second Kings chapter two, verse eight. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. So Elijah did, uh, they crossed a waterway on dry ground. Verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask, what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. In other words, I want double that Holy Ghost stuff that you got. I want double. I want double. You know all the power you got? I want double. I want twice. I don't want to just win the lotto. I want to win the lotto twice. Well, I'm being, you know, never mind. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, let me tell you something, people. Elijah is going to return as one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation con and confront the false prophet and the beast. Oh yeah. I did an hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah. If you're interested, he is probably my favorite Old Testament prophet. Very interesting life. All right, so, verse 12. So, Elijah's taken up into heaven, chariots of, and horses of fire. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, verse 12, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. So, you know, just like Moses did, Elijah did it, and Elisha did it. Both. Oh, yeah. Baptism, right? In a way, I guess you could say. Now, go to Matthew chapter 3. I guess we're going to read uh, starting at verse 1. Now, please understand something. Jesus said of all those born of women, there was not a greater than John 
the Baptist. A, not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Uh, you know, let me tell you something. That's, uh, that's one uh, incredible reference, if you ask me. So, let's read about John. All right, Chaplain Bob, prove that to me about John the Baptist. How about Luke? Luke 7.28. Luke's the physician. Jesus speaking, For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All right. And uh, if you want a second witness, Matthew 11.11. 11. And no, it's not John the Southern Baptist. Uh, he's not a member of the Masonic Lodge. Sorry. His mother wasn't an Eastern star. So, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, when God repents, and when we're told to repent, does not mean the same thing. We have sin and wickedness to repent of. God doesn't. Verse 3. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment, his clothing, had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loin, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Boy, if this guy showed up in a Baptist church on a Sunday, they'd probably tell, uh, tell that homeless bum to leave. Man, look at this guy. Camel's hair. I, the guy didn't even have enough respect to wear a suit on, to a church on a Sunday. He'd wear his Sunday best. What kind of a bum is this? You know, they'd probably tell him to leave. I, I, I'm serious. I, I'm dead serious. You know? Camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loin and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. See, that baptism, they were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers! Wow, John, that's really harsh, dude. Don't you know, you're not going to win any people uh, being mean to them like that. You should tell them how much God loves them. Well, that's the, that's the Joel Osteen uh, translation. But he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Hell, right? I indeed baptize you with water. Ah, baptism with water. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat 
and to the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, or allowed. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's go to Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. Matthew 20, 20. You got to have perfect vision for this, right? 2020. 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? In other words, what would you like? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said, Oh yeah, oh yeah, buddy, you better believe it. Oh, well, that's the Bob translation. They said unto him, We are able. Oh boy, they don't know what they're asking for, do they? Verse 23, And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Remember, they wanted to, you know, the, they said, can you drink from this cup? Can you take of this baptism? And they said, oh yeah, we can. But what cup was that? How about Matthew 26, 39? And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. What cup? The crucifixion, that was the cup. Uh, you know, he wanted that cup to pass from him if it was possible, but it wasn't possible. So, you know, the uh, those two didn't know what they were asking, did they? Oh yeah, can you uh, drink of the cup and uh, have the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? And they said, oh yeah, we're able. Oh yeah, you didn't know what you were asking for. Christ was crucified, and guess what? Those apostles, do you know that Ten of the twelve apostles died for their faith in Christ. The only two that didn't die for their faith was Judas Iscariot, who hung himself, and St. John of on the Isle of Patmos. He died of old age, according to legend. But all the rest of them died for their faith. All of them. Think about that. All right, how about Acts chapter 1? All right, after Christ had been crucified. Remember, um, John said that uh, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Ghost? Oh, yeah, let's take a look at that. Acts 1.1. 1, 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he went through the Holy Ghost, had given, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, 
not many days hence. You know, these people say, oh yeah, you got to be baptized. Well, yeah, you do. But is it water baptism, which is basically a ceremonial cleansing of the flesh? Are we gonna, or is it a spiritual baptism with the Holy Spirit? That's what my opinion is. But uh, hey, what do I know? There's whole churches that say you got to get a water baptism, or you aren't going to be saved. Personally, I think they're wrong. But hey, what do I know? Verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, when they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And when they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You see, he went up into the clouds, and when he comes back, he's going to come back in the clouds. And we're going to, those that are in Christ will be caught up in the clouds with him in the air. Very, very, very important. I know I've beaten this horse many a times, but I'm going to beat it again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This might be one of the most important things that you ever learn of any Bible study that anybody ever gives you. And I'm not taking credit for this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, so what's the subject? The coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, they're dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture. No, that's not what it says. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, a shout. Because every secret rapture has a shout, right? Yeah. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Sorry, not Donald. And with the trump of God. Remember, there's seven trumps. The seventh one is at the end of the tribulation. All right. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's read that again. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you're not caught up in the clouds, in the air, to meet the Lord, it's the wrong Messiah. And in Matthew 24, the Bible plainly teaches the false Messiah comes first. Why can't people understand that? Oh, that's right. We get our Bible doctrines and theology from our lying preacher. 
and and from Hollywood. Oh, I, yeah, Left Behind with uh, Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I especially really enjoyed his Ghost Rider movie. Yeah, a, a flaming skeleton on a motorcycle running around. Ghost Rider. Yeah, that yeah, that makes me really 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 want to learn Bible doctrines from Hollywood and uh, a flaming skeleton flying around. And no, I didn't see the movie. But I I saw him running around on the motorcycle as a flaming skeleton. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be a flaming skeleton, all right, if he doesn't repent and come to the Lord. But I, he's probably of the generation of vipers that John was talking about. Otherwise, he wouldn't be part of the Hollywood crowd, right? But, Bob, you're being judgmental. Well, you know, Jesus said, by their fruits, ye shall know them. You know? Hey, everybody, help me buy. Uh, I, I got to... I, I can't I can't get around on my thirty million dollar Learjet anymore. I, I need a sixty million dollar Learjet. So yeah. Taking a play from uh Benny Hinn or or, or Klepto Dollar or uh Creflo send me many a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't see me asking uh a Learjet. I couldn't even afford to buy the jet fuel for a Learjet. I hear those things burn like a gallon a minute. Yeah, no, I don't think I could. Uh, I don't think I could afford a Learjet. Acts two thirty eight. Peter. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh yeah. There you go. How about Romans chapter 6 and verse 3? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? What do you think that labor was for in the tabernacle? I mean, it was everything in the tabernacle points toward Jesus Christ. Everything. All right, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Oh, yeah, you Paul haters. Yeah, they hate Paul because Paul preaches Jesus Christ and grace and the cross and Christ crucified. But, but, but we got to, you know, have the law, the law, the law. Paul changed the law. That's why we know he's a false apostle. No, he didn't. Christ changed the law. Christ said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On this hang all the law and the prophets. Paul didn't change the law. Jesus did. And if you want to keep 600 laws to try to be saved, you go for it, buddy boy. I don't care. Galatians 3, chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And there's going to be a lot of people who will tell you, oh, that's spiritual. Well, yeah, it's spiritual, all right. But I also think it's literal and physical. 
But hey, that makes me a white supremacist, right? Well, I'm white, but uh, a servant of the Lord is not a supremacist. Christ is supreme. Verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. Uh, have the black Hebrews blessed? What have the black Hebrews ever blessed? Or the Zulus in Africa? What have they ever blessed? You know? I'm not saying we're perfect, but you know what? Look around you. I mean, refrigeration, air conditioning, electricity, lighting, indoor plumbing, toilets, sewage plants. Where did all, who invented all this stuff? They'll, you know, the black Hebrews will say, oh yeah, the Af that was all invented in Africa. And the white man came over and stole it all and stole everything and, and then forced us to live in mud huts. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, are we all God's creation? Does God have a chosen people? Does he have an elect? Good questions. Verse 8, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. For then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Hebrew roots people are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Uh, what's a cross made out of? Wood. Where do you get wood from? A tree. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Uh, and oh, by the way, people, you know why they used to hang people by the neck from the trees in the Old West? Because they knew cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Yeah. Maybe we should be doing public hangings today of criminals. And I mean, you got to be 100% certain before you do anything. The Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So you catch a criminal, two or three witnesses that they did it. Yeah. And uh, televise it on Friday night television. You know, people, people uh, will think two or three times before they do something. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, or the nations, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now do Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise. You know, you're not going to work 
and keep the law and get the promise. No. No. God promised Abraham from Isaac and then Jacob Israel. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by, uh, should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, but after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And your Baptist churches will say, oh, well, that's spiritual seed. Uh, it doesn't say that, does it? I don't see the word spiritual in there anywhere. It says, if you're Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's how I see it. You know? I think those in Christ are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. But, hey, that's just my opinion. What can I tell you? So, what was that, uh, what was that labor, that wash basin for in the tabernacle? It was to point us to Christ. Baptism. The washing of the water of the word. Being baptized in Christ. And I, wow, over an hour. Unbelievable. I figured this would probably be a 30-minute study. Oh, well. Wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. And it won't be the last. But one thing I'm not wrong about. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.